Hello again, and this micro lecture is on electromagnets and power production. As always, you need three or more bullet points worth of notes, one to two sentence summary, and to do your follow-up questions on Google Forms. Okay, so let's review real fast. If you run current through a wire, it creates a circular magnetic field. So electricity can generate a magnetic field. Well, that's not too useful, because I don't know if you've seen most magnets. We tend not to deal with kind of like a circular magnetic field in this case. We usually want like a strong end of a magnet to be a little bit more linear or straight lined if possible. Well, in order to get something to behave more like a bar magnet, what you do is you take the wire and you actually make coils. So in this case, the wire is coming out of the page on this side right here, and then coming around and going into the page on that side, or maybe vice versa. But essentially, by coiling the wire, what we get is a pattern or behavior that is very similar to a traditional bar magnet. And so this is called a solenoid, but it can also be called an electromagnet. It's the general term for it. So magnets that we create by using um, electric current are called electromagnets. So that's generally what an electromagnet is. So we've got a regular magnet or permanent magnet, and then we've got an electromagnet behaving very similarly. So if you coil the wire now around something magnetic, like a nail, not necessarily something that's already a magnet, um, but something like, you know, a piece of metal or a bar or something along those lines that uh, has some iron or cobalt or nickel in it, then what happens is when you let the ele electricity flow through, it magnetizes the nail and then makes the magnetic field from this device even stronger. So we say this has an iron core because it has iron in the center as opposed to an air core, which is a hollow center. So we can make our electromagnet stronger in this way and that it's not just a coil of wire, but we use a coil of wire wrapped around something that it can then magnetize. And then what you can do is you can turn the uh, magnet on and off. So if it's something like a paperclip that loses its magnetism very quickly, then we can turn the electricity on, turn on our magnet in this sense, and then when we unplug it, then it goes back to normal. So it loses its magnetism very quickly. And if we reverse the current in the other direction, we'll actually get a magnet that goes in the opposite direction. So in this way, unlike a kind of permanent bar magnet, it's a magnet that we can control the strength of it. It's a magnet where we can also turn it on and off, and a magnet where we can switch its direction um, all very quickly simply by changing the strength um, and direction of the current. So similar to how we can use a electricity to create a magnet, we can also use uh, a coiled wire and a magnet to create electricity. So the coiled wire in this case is a, a coil, but it doesn't have any electricity flowing through it on its own. What we do instead is if we can rotate or change, uh, sorry, move this coil of wire through a magnetic field, it actually applies a force on the electrons inside. So it generates an electric field. And then what happens is the electrons begin to move. So by spinning this coil of wire inside this magnetic field, we actually create electricity or electron movement. Now it's not like we have to pump in electrons or anything like that, because all the atoms in here already have them. We're just causing the ones in there to move. So to generate currents, we can do it a couple of different ways. I just outlined one of them, but you can generally move a magnet through a coil of wire. So if you had a coil of wire like this, you can take a bar magnet and move it in and out, um, and that would cause a uh, current to generate. Or you can move a coil of wire through a magnetic field, much as we're doing in this one. Where you have a coil of wire, you can move it up and down or side to side, those work. Or alternatively, you can just rotate it. And I'm not going to go into why rotation works, but it does. So either way, um, what's happening is there's a changing magnetic field around the wire, and that creates an electric field that makes those charges move or makes the electrons move. And so, all, like I said, all of the electrons we need are already in that wire, and they just begin to move, and that is electricity. And so that brings me to how most power plants work, and that is that they do this last one, or do that last one that I talked about, which is usually they're moving a coil of wire through a magnetic field. So they do so in large turbines like this, and they're using fuel or wind or water or something to spin a coil of wire within a magnetic field. Now they can do the other way around, and some of them do, um, but I believe this one is more common. That's it for this one. Three or more bullet points worth of notes, a one to two sentence summary, and your follow-up questions on Google Forms.